it is popular to speak of a 400 year period of Roman domination and occupation of Britain. This is not true, and contrary to established facts and evidence. Julius Caesar invaded Britain in 55 BC, but was forced to evacuate. He returned in 54 BC and was totally defeated and humiliated. King Dingad was the Caswellan of the British armies at the time. Caswellan roughly translates as War King. In 54 BC, the Caswellan employed a scorched earth policy by drawing Julius Caesar and his army into the centre of Britain and completely depriving him of food for his army, forcing him to surrender. The Caswellan allowed him to land his army, allowed him to move inland and upstream to cross the Thames with ease at a shallow ford, and then simply drove off all the animal stock and scorched the earth ahead of him, leaving his army starving. The Caswellan actually sent almost all of his army home for winter and was able to harass Caesar's army of around 40,000 with only 4,000 chariots and prevented them from foraging for food. The Caswellan then sent one British army to block the ford of the Thames and another to attack Caesar's base and fleet of ships. In this way, the Roman commander was cut off without supplies. The Caswellan then surrounded Caesar's army with his troops and escorted the Romans back to their ships. In his own account, De Bello Gallico, The Gallic Wars, Caesar tells of the scramble to escape and each ship carrying three times the normal amount of soldiers. Contemporary Roman poets lampooned Julius Caesar for this disastrous campaign and complete humiliation. The political Roman account reads like victory for Caesar because the admission of defeat would spell political ruin for him at the hands of Crassus and Pompey. The scale of the British victory can be judged from the fact that this same Julius Caesar had defeated an army of Gauls that exceeded 30,000. It would be almost 100 years before the Romans tried again. This time, it was in the time of Emperor Claudius. King Caradoc led the opposition to Rome for nine years, AD 42 to 51. In the AD 51 battle, the Romans claimed to have won, but it was at best a draw. All the evidence points to a British victory. After this battle, King Caradoc went north to Arigued Vodog, alias Cartis Mandua, the queen of the Brigants, to persuade her to join forces against the Romans. Unfortunately, she had Caradoc seized and sent to the Romans in chains. The Romans were unable to penetrate the South Cymru territory after the AD 51 battle until 23 years later in AD 74. So, there was a partial conquest of some southern and eastern areas of Britain. The Boudicca uprising of AD 56 killed 100,000 Romans. In AD 80, Romans record that Bernassus usurped the empire in Britain. Romans remained ejected from Britain for 34 years. In AD 124, Hadrian made a diplomatic visit to the British. It was not a conquest, it was just to make trade agreements. So, by AD 124, 
the notion of 400 years of Roman Britain is demolished. Hadrian did not build a wall, he built a series of forts connected by a road. Septimus Severus built the wall in AD 210 in a very different political climate. The intermarriages of the Claudian period made British royalty part of the imperial bloodline and Hadrian had no heirs. All the Roman emperors from Hadrian's death in AD 138 until AD 235 are close matches with leading British princes. The deal between Hadrian and the British was this. The British would bring Britain into Rome's vast trading consortium, for that is all that it was, and in return gave Hadrian and the Empire the much needed legitimate emperors. In AD 235 to 286, there was no less than 101 short lived usurping non British emperors. There was chaos in the Roman Empire. In that era, Britain was part of a separate Western Empire of Britain, Gaul and Spain. British Emperor Carosius, alias King Caron, was murdered in AD 293. He had ruled Britain and most of Gaul independently for many years and then as equal imperial co-partners with the Emperor Diocletian and Maximinius from AD 283, which was the beginning of a short-lived reunification with Rome. The new Western Emperor, living in Britain from AD 296 to 306, was Constantine Chlorus the husband of the British Queen Helen of the Cross. Their son, Constantine the Great, re-established British rule over the entire empire and made himself head of the Christian Church, which he formally legitimised in Rome and Constantinople. In AD 310 to 322, King Eudaph Octavius, grandson of the Western Emperor Victorinus, fought and finally defeated and ejected Constantine's lieutenants from Britain. Britain split off again from the Roman Empire. Britain was independent under King Eudaph from 322 to 357. After this, there was a brief excursion into Britain by General Theodosius and then Britain was independent again under the next of the British Imperial line in Masson Ludig or Magnus Maximus, the son of Crispus, the eldest son of Constantine the Great. Magnus Maximus and his son Arthur I, alias and Dragatheus invaded Gaul in 383 and seized the entire Western Empire until 388. There was another brief foray into Britain before independence was again established. The British elected three kings in quick succession and in 406 Constantine Coronog the crowned whose genealogy is well attested, and the British army invaded Gaul and held it, threatening Honorius in Rome until 411. The election of Constantine Coronog in 406 gave rise to the medieval notion that after the death of King Arthur, his cousin Constantine became king. Now comes the crowning glory of invented history. In Rome, the beleaguered Honorius 
was unable to stop the German King Alaric from ravaging Italy. As Alaric moved his hordes southward towards Sicily, Honorius then wrote a letter to the citizens of Regium, the local capital of the region of Britium, on the toe of Italy opposite the Straits of Messina. In his letter, Honorius advised these Italian citizens of Regium in Brutium that he could offer them no aid against Alaric. In an astonishing piece of trickery, academics have time and again claimed that this letter of 411 AD was sent to the alleged helpless British in Britain allowing these allegedly weak and primitive British to go their own way without the friendly protection of Rome. So at a time when powerful British armies had once again seized Western Europe in 406 to 411 AD and had totally defeated the confederation of German Vandals, Swaves and Alans which had overrun the weak Romans in Gaul their sworn enemy, Honorius, is exhibited as being no longer able to protect these same British. In fact, the British general Geraint, who blocked the passes of the Pyrenees, set up his own puppet emperor in a rage against King Constantine the Crown because of his indolence in not moving to attack Honorius. It is hilarious that with King Constantine III sitting in Trave in France and controlling all Britain, France and Spain after having defeated the Vandals, Swaves and Alans to keep them away from the Channel and Britain that Honorius cowering in Rome should be alleged to write a letter to the British telling them he could no longer defend them. The letter went to the city of Regium in Britium, in the far south of Italy, and not to the powerful and independent people of Britain. In short, the periods of Roman control over parts of Britain were brief, and the theory of 400 years of Roman Britain is an illusion.